This team started the Pac-10 schedule in December with a barn burner in Los Angeles. We come into the final weekend of the regular season. Washington is fighting for its postseason life, while USC is battling for postseason position. Trojans and Huskies tonight at the Bank of America Arena in Seattle. Pac-10 basketball and FSN. Hello again, Brian Davis, along with Bob Wise and Paul Westfall. Let's see, not that long ago in a galaxy not that far away, these guys were brothers in arms coaching in the NBA. Paul, I kind of feel like we've got the band back together. Well, it's great to be back with Bob. Like I said, I remember when he was a little, when I was a little boy watching him play in the NBA. And then, uh, of course, we worked together, and he is the cleverest, brightest coach that I've ever been around. I want to hear this comeback. <laughs> well, it's a shock, first of all. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's going to be fun working with Paul tonight because for the first time he's not my boss. I can say what I want. Well, let's talk about <laughs> USC, which has a chance, depending on how things go this weekend, to finish second the regular season starting the tournament next week in L.A. Uh, Nick Young being in that lineup has got to make Tim Floyd feel a lot better. This guy is a potential Pac-10 yeah. player of the year. He really is. He's really matured this year. He can score. He's shooting 48 percent from behind the arc, over 50 percent on his own regular shots. But he, he hits the outside shot. He drives. Best of all, he posts up. He turns either way. It's a lot like uh, Dwight Howard of the Mavericks in that when he gets inside, he just has so many ways he can hurt you. Wild inconsistency has been the Huskies hallmark particularly at Jekyll and Hyde home and road thing back home. John Brockman has been very consistent for the Huskies. Definitely the steadiest player and I think he's going to play a big part tonight because rebounding is the one place USC has been a little weak. They're a negative three and it's a strong point of Washington. So I think if Washington is going to be in this game they've got to dominate the boards again tonight. Well back on December 28th Brockman got into foul trouble early and that did change the complexion of the basketball game. Trojans won in double overtime the return match tonight on the Huskies court tip off is next USC at Washington on FSN. At the Galen Center in Los Angeles on December 28th, the conference opener went in double overtime to USC. Interesting matchup here tonight in Seattle because Washington at home averages 84 points a game. The Trojans lead the Pac-10 in scoring and field goal defense. Haas had a nice Pac-10 debut. Appleby was on fire from beyond the arc, especially in the first half. But Nick Young and Gibson Young especially saved his best for last. Only two points in the first half. He had 23 after intermission, including six in the second overtime for the victory over Washington. Tim Floyd, a nice encore to his debut a season ago at USC. He's got his team in position one game behind Washington State. The Trojans currently third in the Pac-10. They come in off a sweep of the Northern California schools, which Floyd says they needed to have after that loss at Arizona State. The Trojans have a three-point threat of their own, and he is from Seattle playing his final collegiate game at home in his hometown, Lodrick Stewart, number three, the all-time three-point scorer in Trojans history. Lorenzo Romar, a Los Angeles area guy who is trying to get the Huskies into the NCAA tournament for the fourth consecutive year. It has now become the longest of shots. A lot of people think that Romar and the Huskies have to not only sweep this weekend, but win four in the Pac-10 tournament. How about Ryan Appleby, the three-point specialist, but again, John Brockman, 13 double-doubles, leading the Pac-10. He was inhibited by foul trouble December the 28th in L.A. And now we are underway. First touch to the Trojans of USC. They started, well, they kind of wrinkled it up starting the sophomore Keith Wilkinson instead of the senior post end job. Well, the Trojans always start Nick Young and Lodrick Stewart, Taj Gibson, and Gabe Pruitt. After that, Tim Floyd, I, I don't know if, if he just, like, pulls cards out of a hat, but uh, he started Rashawn Cromwell against Stanford. He played great. And then the next game he started Abdullah Enjai against Cal and he did fine on senior night and now Keith Wilkinson and uh, sometimes it's Dwight Lewis it just doesn't seem to matter he uh, he goes with who he feels 
Spencer Hawes rolling one up the hook off the baseline. Brockman with his second rebound in the first minute of the game on the putback and scores. Yeah, Brockman's doing what Brockman does, you know, rebound at each end. Brockman had 11 boards at the Galen Center. About a half a dozen of those in the first five minutes or so, but then foul trouble limited him, and Brockman did not hit the score sheet. Only four points on the turnaround. There's Gibson. Taj Gibson is another guy that, uh, even as a freshman, some people think ought to be considered for player of the year. The freshman out of Brooklyn, New York, he prepped in San Fernando. He has had quite a year as a Trojan. Well, he talked a little bit about uh, he, he had a couple bad games, and, and uh, Gibson said he thought he hit the freshman wall or something, and Tim Floyd said, just suck it up. You're not tired. You're, don't quit being a baby, and he's been real good since then. Along the baseline, Quincy Pondexter, one of three freshman starters, regulars. Dentman can't keep up as Pruitt flies down the court and scores. You know, Pondexter's another one that uh, started out very strong as a freshman, hit a little bit of a wall. Now he's starting again, but he's never really found that offensive click that he had at the beginning of the year. Appleby from Dentman is a little bit long and the rebound to Gibson. If you're USC, you, Paul, you got to try to limit Dentman at either end of the floor, really, because sometimes his offense and defense go together, and he's coming off of a game that he turned the ball over six times and a loss to Oregon. Well, that, that's SC's big reason they, they have a chance to be second in the Pac-10 is their defense. It's just been sensational all year. And uh, Detman is going to have to take care of the ball because Stewart and Young and Pruitt all are very active with their hands. Young makes a nice move on Pondexter. The help is late, and Young finishes for an early four-point lead for the Trojans. And uh, that was a great move because Pondexter, to me, is one of the better defenders on the team. Has great feet. Young went by him like he wasn't there. Detman falling away for three. Young is just so deceptive, and, and he's got long arms and, and uh, an unorthodox way when he gets in there. It's hard to predict what he's going to do. Lodrick Stewart misses from beyond the arc. Nice find inside. Appleby, good ball reversal. Dentman hits it again. Lightning strikes twice. This guy, fellas, who in the last five games has averaged five points on 23% shooting. <laughs> it's a new night. Yeah, he and you know what? When he gets it rolling, though, it, it changes his whole game. So he could be in for a, a for a very good night. The entry pass into the post. Gibson is fouled by Brockman. We'll see Denman again. Good ball movement. Pondexter has a nice feel for the game. He he makes the right pass at the right time. And uh, there you are with your feet set. All you got to do is cock it, and pull the trigger. Now, Pondexter could have shot that himself, but uh, I think all the Trojans thought that too, and they clogged the lane, and uh, there was nobody near Denton. Yeah, he. Uh, this team has a lot of players that have a good feel for the basketball. They don't have a true point guard that really runs it, but they got a lot of guys that can play. Wilkinson gets a little scrambling in the low post against the double team. Brockman from Oliver plus one. And Paul, there's an example. Oliver, you know, just another guy. He's not a point guard, but a nice feel yeah. for the game. Good delivery to block Brockman. Yeah, he made it look easy. Down at the other end, I don't know why Gibson didn't shoot. He had uh, Brockman on his back, and he beat him with the same move. He, he beat him with a couple seconds ago when they, uh, they they called the foul, and he just chose not to go up. And I don't think Wilkinson was ready for the pass, and it got translated into a three-point play for the Huskies. Brockman with five points already ahead of what he had on December the 28th. He is the leading rebounder in the Pac-10 at nine and a half, and Washington has scored nine unanswered points. Young has a little bit of height advantage on Dentman, takes advantage of it and scores beyond the arc. He just shoots the ball so easily. I, I, I'm surprised he only averages 16, 17 a game. It's a, it's a testament to how team oriented they are because he could he could easily average 25 a game if he tried to. And he almost got a four point play on that one. They could have called it. Nice read on the pass inside by Pruitt who unselfishly leaves it for Young. The third leading scorer in the Pac-10 at 17 a game. Young on the finish off the turnover has seven on three or four shooting. 
Well, Pruitt could have shot that himself too, and it was very unselfish. And between Pruitt, Young, and Stewart, they they get more breakaways off steals, I think, than any team in the conference. Last year, Tim Floyd thought he had a better weapon defensively, and Ryan Francis, the freshman point guard, who was shot to death in Louisiana over the summer as the Huskies bumped back in the lead. That changed the Trojans defensively, but timing is everything. Well, it, it changed them in every way. I mean, they, they were devastated. Uh, you know, just, just imagine, he, he was not only a great kid, he was their point guard. I mean, all that stuff goes into play. They didn't even have another point guard. They were turning the ball over 25 times a game early in the year before Pruitt came back from his academic difficulties. And it's just, uh, it's unbelievable what Tim Floyd has done with the adversity that started with the shooting of Red Ryan Francis. Gibson with a great power move to battle through the long double team, and then Wilkinson misses Hawes with the rebound and a foul going up the floor. And he showed good footwork not to trample Brockman. <laughs> <laughs> Time has taken. John Brockman has it going early for the Huskies, but the Trojans are right in this and figure to be. Bring your lunch bucket. It's going to be an all-day job in Seattle. With Paul Westfall and Bob Weiss, Brian Davis in Seattle, Washington, and USC opening the final weekend of regular season play in the Pac-10. John Brockman with 13 double-doubles, and Taj Gibson right behind leads the Pac-10, shooting 58%. Nice marquee matchup quality to this one. Well, you know, in the open, we covered Brockman and Young, and uh, I think rightfully so. They both have seven points. It's like they're out there <laughs> playing horse, Paul. Well, it's not any big uh, flash to spotlight those two guys. They, they've been excellent all year. Taj Gibson has for SC, too. But, but I have a question. I haven't followed the Huskies that much lately. Spencer ha uh, Hawes was fantastic in the first game. He's had some injury troubles. How's he doing now? Uh, he's a lot better. He also ran into the flu. He, he uh, was ill for about two weeks. Uh, lost 15 pounds uh, and now he's, he's getting it back and he's playing much better. Good. Hawes really hasn't been himself all year except the last couple of weeks but Denton also on fire again we talked about the struggles of this sophomore from Carbondale Illinois but he is really shaking that off and before the ball game as he works out high on Pruitt off the ball we've got a foul call on Nick Young for a hold on Adrian Oliver. But Dittman, Lorenzo Romar said, I think he's going to finish the season strong because the results haven't been there, but his work, his work ethic and habits have not changed. No, they've been very happy with his work ethic, but until this point, he has really not been consistent, and he needs to get that. They need, they need him. Gabe Pruitt knocks down the basket. Artem Wallace committed a foul while Pruitt shot the ball, so the basket counts. And here's a guy who made his first start of the season. We look at Wallace, the sophomore out of Toledo, Washington. But Pruitt is a guy who made his first start of the season at 18 against Washington in December, and he continues to develop. Well, Pruitt's a very good player. He established himself the last couple of years as being legitimately one of the better guards in the Pac-10, but he... Uh, Decided not to go to school for a while. He thought he was he was really really good and didn't have to do that. And then he got slapped pretty hard for that. But he's he's back now. Just hit two threes in a row. So I guess uh, he's got his game back, his his feel back uh, at this stage of the season. Gibson coming off of a game last week in which he scored. Is that Deppin again? But yes, it is. <laughs> It's going to be a game of three. Sorry. How many did you say he had last game? Uh, last couple of games? Five last, each game? He's had five and a half. That's his average. Wilkinson from the elbow. Nice drop for the big man. But yeah, Dentman, and part of it is, is a confidence thing. And part of it also is that a lot of his veteran support is gone. And I'm talking about guys like Brandon Roy, last year's Pac-10 Player of the Year. Guys like Will Conroy. Uh, you know, all of a sudden... Denton found himself exposed. Well, I think you have to give Lorenzo Romar a lot of credit, too. I mean, if he's telling you this guy's going to break out, he's obviously telling Denton that, too. And a player, there's nothing like having the confidence of your coach. And uh, so uh, it says a lot for Lorenzo. Wilkinson goes to that same well again. This time, Wallace cleans it up off the miss. Wilkinson just shot two in a row. He, he, he usually doesn't average two shots a game. So uh, he must, I don't know if he sees it. Somebody coming in for him, and he wants to get him up before he uh, goes and takes a rest <laughs> or not. 
Rockman with his That's heels. That's more up. of a pro move. <laughs> Got a scramble underneath and a held ball and possession arrow favors Washington, which at the moment has got Phil Nelson, number 44, the freshman from Kaiser, Oregon, near the state capital of Salem. Brockman and Dittman check out. So Nelson joined by Appleby, Spencer Hawes, Autumn Wallace, and Adrian Oliver for Washington. Bob, you said that was a pro move, taking a shot. Didn't you do that in high school? <laughs> I used to miss, miss the second end of a one-on-one -on -one so I could stay in, maybe get the ball back. <laughs> uh, no, I never did it in high school because I never came out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> White Lewis. We <laughs> needed you to jump center. <laughs> Small after all the baskets. Five guys. You know, his game really changed when they stopped awarding a foul shot after oh. every foul. <laughs> Finding a way early. He it's shot those yeah. underhand free throws really well, though. <laughs> It has been a struggle recently for the sophomore point guard Justin Dittman of Washington, but he hasn't missed a shot tonight. He's already got 11 points in the first eight minutes and change of this basketball game. Well, I, I have a question now. He's got 11 points. Does he have fouls that I don't know about? Because he's <laughs> he's young. He can't be tired. I'm surprised that uh, that Lorenzo would rest him now when he's that hot. Uh, what do you think his thinking is, Bob? Well, I think uh, you know. And a lot of these coaches, they like, they want, they need to play a lot of players because they're young and they're trying to develop them, and so they go more by time than just you know how any individual is going sometimes. And another guy too that you wonder right now, you don't question why he's on the bench because you got to rotate. But Lodrick Stewart again is back in his hometown, Seattle, uh, has the ability from beyond the three-point arc who, who could change things in a big way. For the Trojans, and, and you've seen that plenty of times. Well, he's real streaky, and, and he's had a great year. He, he's he's been more consistent than he's ever been. But when he gets on a roll and starts shooting that ball, you just it looks like the basket's about five feet in diameter. And uh, you know he's he's rotated out now. He hasn't even got a shot yet in this game that I recall. But uh, he's able to score, taking it to the hoop a lot better than I ever remember in the past. He's added that to his game, and uh, when he gets some shots up, you just always think it's going in by the way he releases it. Lodrick Stewart, Justin Dentman, a couple of players that we promised that we would follow, people that you need to watch tonight in this next to last game of the regular season of the Pac-10. Lodrick Stewart out of Rainier Beach High School right here in Seattle and wearing the number 12 in honor of his fallen teammate Ryan Francis. You see that on his right shoulder and Nelson on the turnaround is fouled and he will go to the free throw line and that is five team fouls now against USC. You know it's always interesting to me uh, when a guy does come home how does he play I know that uh, when I was assistant coach with uh, with Dallas whenever we went to Michigan Jay Vincent would go for 40. I mean he yeah. just loved it and then but Brad Davis who was a steady player when we played near Cleveland his hometown he couldn't do a thing so it's a uh, you know guys are different Stewart four field goals first time back five field goals second time back last year he had six six of twelve so he's bumped it up every season Nelson's free throws giving Washington the lead by a deuce and Ryan goes to guard five what second call? call a five second call Ryan Appleby defending Nick Young who obviously can't believe it well, we could say good defense, or we could say, what's that ref looking at? He, I'm not quite sure. That, that I don't even think that it was right in front of the Husky uh, students, and I think they were even surprised at that call. Well, you know, sometimes officials, they go through their list of what they've called, and they say, oh, I haven't called this one. In a long Maybe time. there's a bonus for calling an obscure call. The battle for the boards won by Rashawn Cromwell coming up the floor. Cromwell had a great game as we look at Nelson. Cromwell had a great game against Stanford when he got the start. He had week. hardly played in, in weeks, and uh, he got out there because the Lopez twins had blocked 19 shots against the Trojans when they played up at Stanford. They only made 19 field goals, and they had 19 shots blocked in that game. And, and so Tim Floyd started Cromwell, and he came out. Pete Carroll gave them a, a, a pep talk, a football-style pep talk in the locker room, and he came out like he was a football player with that look in his eyes and the Lopez brothers kind of said this guy's crazy and, and they didn't they didn't block a shot till the second half <laughs> Trojans off the held ball by the way we'll keep the ball with nine seconds to shoot as we take a look at Cromwell out of Memphis Tennessee prepped at the IMG Academy down in Bradenton Florida so Pete Carroll's a pretty good assistant basketball coach as well as his, uh, his football uh, kudos 
Pruitt with the ball. It's Pruitt, Cromwell, Stewart, Lewis. Oh, and from ever away, Pruitt just has to the jack it up because the shot clock, shot clock that's exactly right. He had no choice. So the fans at least get to chant air ball here at the B of A. Here's Dwight Lewis, a freshman out of Metro. I don't Metro think it'll hurt Pruitt's feelings too much. No, not a 40-footer with one left. Appleby looking for space. Oliver now checks inside. Oliver Nelson, Wallace, entry pass in the post. Lewis a little bit anxious and overruns him. Wallace was pinned underneath but gets bailed out. Well, he, he lost his position. Uh, you get a foul when that happens usually. But the Trojans is really interesting to what Tim Floyd's doing. He's uh, played nine players already. And uh, he very seldom does this. Kyle Austin is in the game. He hasn't played in, in weeks. And uh, this is just a uncharacteristic of Tim. Usually he rides his four main guys and, and uh, only subs if they have foul trouble. And then has the fifth, the fifth player could be anybody. But right now he's, he's going pretty deep on his bench. As we've alluded, it's time for the Pac-10 tournament. Which teams will keep their March Madness dreams alive? Find out Wednesday as the first round games get underway. 6.30 p.m. Thursday, the quarterfinals at noon. That's the semifinals Friday, 6 p.m. on FSN. Wallace is a 33% free throw shooter. You just saw that play out at the line at the other end. Now he's working defensively. At the elbow, nice pass inside to Lewis. Shot clock is inside 10 and pause with the rebound. Off that miss by the freshman Kyle Austin. Austin is another guy whose playing time has been up and down. Sometimes you see him for stretches and sometimes you don't for long stretches. Yeah, it, it's unusual. It's pretty, I, I, he's played very little in the conference season. Pause on the turnaround, knocks it down. It gives Washington a four-point lead. The Huskies largest to the night. Dentman swats the ball through it. Does a great job of hanging on to it and then finishing the play. Both teams doing a great job of shooting the basketball so far. Nine the Trojans aren't used to having a team shoot this high a percentage against them. Well, they're at 50 percent. USC is at 53 and Hawes again same spot same result. That's not fair. <laughs> no. <laughs> a seven footer could shoot like that. And I think Wallace might have got a steal on that play too. I thought that pass was going to the corner and Wallace reached up and grabbed it. Nice feed inside the Lodrick Stewart to help just a little bit late. Stewart to the board for the first time. Through it leads the Trojans. Oh my goodness. Bill this Nelson. is one of those nights where the, the baskets are open. Yeah, team to get the ball last gonna win. Nelson has played like a freshman, but that is a big part of his resume that he can shoot the three ball. Guarded by Paz Cromwell. Jacks up kind of an ugly looking shot, and Washington comes away on the boards 10 to 8. The Huskies advantage in rebounding. And Paz throws it right to Austin, who finds Pruitt one on one with Appleby. Leaves it for Lewis. Short, and Haas says thank you. Guess where this is going? <laughs> I've seen him play before, Paul. Yeah, I, that didn't surprise you too much. No, it did not. Washington is five of nine from three, and just like that, the Huskies' lead is eight. SC saw that from Apple plenty down in Los Angeles the first time they met, too. I think he made six out of nine. If I remember, he made all six in the first half. Well, he, he can get on a streak. Appleby had 21 points last time out at Oregon, had six three-pointers at the Galen Center in December, and he's extended Washington's lead to eight. Latter stages first half in Seattle. Huskies on a 13-4 run to take an eight-point advantage over the Trojans with seven minutes and change remaining in the first half on the campus of the University of Washington. Both teams have shot the ball well, but Washington has really ridden the three ball and offensive rebounding. Fellas has also made well, a difference. It, it, it's interesting. Uh, 
Dedman was so hot, he had 11 points, and I said, what'd they take him out for? And then Haas started hitting threes, and uh, <laughs> Appleby hit a three, and so I guess he kind of knew what he was doing. He wanted to let some other guys uh, get their turn to drop him in. Nick Young with the basketball guarded by the freshman Quincy Pondexter. Dentman is guarding Daniel Hackett now onto the floor for USC and Floyd has tried a number of different personnel combinations Hackett puts it on the floor and then is just about triple team shot clock running down and Lodrick Stewart knocks down the three that shot looked like yours only he jumps <laughs> well, I jumped too I just didn't get off the floor very far Stewart 45% from beyond the arc. Appleby says, I can do that too. I shoot 42% and I can answer. And he does. You know, Appleby uh, is, uh, I don't know, you probably haven't seen him that much, but he gets the ball off as quick as Ray Allen does. You know, comes off squares. But the other thing he does as well as Ray Allen is a lot of guys, you don't see like to see them shoot the walk up three. You don't like to see him shoot it on the move. The catch and shoot is a much higher percentage. Appleby, like Ray Allen, is one of those rare guys that can make that consistently. Wilkinson is left open and knocks down another. He's got a couple of field goals tonight. Appleby, tries. what are they doing? <laughs> I saw Wilkinson running back on defense and Taj Gibson. They both ran to Hawes, and then Wilkinson goes, "Uh oh, there's Appleby." Well, too know, late. The word sick comes to mind. The word ridiculous comes well, to mind. It's that kid with the, you know, all that blonde hair floating around. Don't let him shoot. That's oh. what Tim Floyd called a timeout to I tell them in case they, they forgot from the scouting report. Seven three-pointers. Yeah, Tim Floyd is livid. He, in fact, I thought he was going to come out and pick up Appleby, but he didn't do it. <laughs> well, if he tripped him, it's a technical, but if they don't get three, <laughs> he right. should have done that. It would have been a smart move. He was there. open right in front of Tim Floyd. And that was, hey, fellas, that was an NBA three as well. And doesn't Appleby. matter. He just made two in a row. I mean, Wilkinson. <laughs> Brian Appleby has put together a personal run for Washington. He is now third at the University of Washington, both the season and career three-point scoring lists. Junior transfer out of the University of Florida, but grew up in the Seattle area, Stanwood, Washington. Up north the waves. You know, Appleby is known for his three-point shooting, but he's really a very, very good team defensive player. He, he doesn't have a lot of skills, strength, uh, not skills, but speed to play good defense. Like right there, that was an individual thing. He can get beat on that, but team-wise, coming over, taking charge is very good. He's got a great battle going at both ends of the floor with Lodrick Stewart. They are matched up against each other. Dentman takes a look inside it, and Daniel Hackett and Quincy Pondexter were getting into each other in a big way off the ball. That is the fifth team foul, and Hackett is the son of USC's strength and conditioning coach, Rudy. So, hey, you want to bang a little bit, Daniel Hackett's your guy. Daniel Hackett is, uh, is a player who was supposed to be a senior in high school this year. And after uh, Ryan Francis' death, he... Uh, he, he went to work and graduated early because SC didn't even have a point guard on their roster. And he had to start early in the year and really, really did a nice job. And you're right, he's a very tough kid. He's very poised as well. Brockman thought that Pondexter would be there to receive that pass underneath, but the lead pass for Stewart out of bounds for another USC turnover. The Trojans fifth of the first half. Washington has given it up three times. You know, Paul, you're not the only one to make me feel old today. Uh, Rudy Hackett, <laughs> uh, Daniel's father, came up to me before I was sitting over in the stands uh, getting ready for the game, and he came over and said, uh, you know, you were a, uh, I was a kid when you uh, worked at a basketball camp. <laughs> so we went way back, uh, back into Pennsylvania and the Poconos. He looks like he could still play. He's in great shape. Yeah. Uh, Pondexter is called for Fallon Stewart as they run up the floor. Much to this pleasure of the home crowd here at the Bank of America Arena. First personal on you know, Dexter. That play right there, Stewart, I mean, um, yeah, Stewart didn't know he was coming up behind him, but the, a couple of plays before, Stewart kind of just jogged after a ball that he couldn't quite get and stepped out of bounds. I, I don't see the urgency that, that from SC that I'm seeing from University of Washington tonight. 
Do you notice the same thing, Bob? Well, I did on that play, yeah. Uh, he, he does, uh, he's playing a little bit cool, maybe because he's at home. I don't know. You asked whether or not Dentman had committed any fouls you hadn't seen. Well, that is his first as we take a look at the Trojans road record. And Tim Floyd has his guys a game behind Washington State. And Pruitt triggers the three. And you saw Dentman getting the earful from Lorenzo Romo on the Washington bench. Appleby, I don't know if that's a forced or an unforced error, but Pruitt can't make the finish as he was down there all by himself. Pondexter came to try to disrupt the shot. Don't know if it worked or whether Pruitt just clutched, but the bottom line is the Huskies have a chance oh. to build on this nine. Appleby lead. did a good job of, of at least making Pruitt make a shot. He didn't foul him and he made him avoid his body and uh, Pruitt wasn't able to finish because of Appleby's pretty smart defense. It's like what you were talking about, Bob. Yeah, he's good at that. And uh, if he gets a chance, he'll get the charge. You know, Paul, you talk about it, you know, a team coming out with lack of intensity. Uh, as coaches, we know you, you can tell a team, hey, these guys are pretty good. They're better than their record, whatever. Players just don't believe it. And sometimes when you get behind like this and uh, you come out with a little bit of lackadaisicalness in your game, it's hard, it's hard to turn it around. Well, <laughs> Washington gets another yeah. three ball from Pondexter. Washington's last five field goals have been from three. Well, there's another sloppy pass right there. But, you know, at the Galen Center, SC needed two overtimes to beat these guys before. They couldn't have thought they were going to be easy. Oh, come on now. <laughs> we're coming from another planet. <laughs> Appleby hits the three. We got to find out what whistle. Michael Eggers saw, the official who blew the whistle. I think he called something on the other side of the floor, and yeah. I don't know if they're going to count this Con basket. Con Dexter was getting into something. There was a little physicalness going on, and uh, I don't know if we can see it here, but, but they're over there. He's on the weak so side. So they counted the basket. They counted the basket, but the foul was against USC in the last couple minutes. He's been getting very physical. Floyd has earned a technical, and Roderick Stewart says, get out of my way. If I want the second one, I'm going to get the second one. Well, Tim Floyd is usually very calm with the officials. I, I, I haven't seen him lose it uh, maybe only once the whole year. So uh, I don't know what his issue is, but he couldn't have liked that step back from Appleby. Well, <laughs> well, they got a call right in front of his bench on one of his players at the same time. His issue, Paul, is that they have been hammering each other up and down the floor the last couple possessions. I, I think that's right, but it's, I think he's also had his feelings hurt by Appleby making all those threes. That's it. And see, Roderick Stewart's trying to trying to say, he says, you know what, you get out of here. He says, I got a, I got a bone, and I'm going to pick it. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm going to handle this myself. A little bit of emotion in Seattle. Tim Floyd just livid. Ryan Appleby hits a three-point shot, a foul called in front of the USC bench. Uh, it, it was actually against the University of Washington, but Floyd took exception to what was called or perhaps the degree of the foul and went off, earned himself a technical. Yeah, we can't hear the whistle on the replay, but um, it, it's pretty interesting there, because there's action between uh, Pondexter and Lodrick Stewart. Uh, upper left hand corner they're running up see before Appleby shoots watch see Stewart actually gives him a little forearm Pondexter waves his arms and then Appleby steps back and hits the three I don't know when the whistle blew but you My can own make an argument that that shot shouldn't count if it happened with that action that we saw between Pondexter and Stewart and, and that was exactly the issue the officials just had an extended look at our video as Appleby has only missed one free throw all season misses the front he'll get two on the technical against Floyd but the issue was did Michael Eggers call the, the foul on the far side before Appleby hit the three from the near side the answer in the end was no one you know one of the things as Floyd regains his composure and works now jacket off on the USC bench Washington went through a five game stretch where they shot the three 22 percent kind of got out of that against Pittsburgh 4 of 15 at Oregon State 8 of 20 last week in their loss at Oregon but tonight 9 of 13 including six consecutive I'm still trying to figure out how they could call that on Pondex yeah I, I was just going to ask you that what did Pondex do other than wave his arms after uh, Stewart gave him a forearm well he hit Stewart in the elbow with his chest <laughs> <laughs> that'll get you a foul every time <laughs>
<laughs> Young hangs in the air to knock down another. He's four, six, nine points. And we talk about Washington getting its touch back from three. Their last six baskets have been beyond the arc. Young has, for the moment, stopped the bleeding, but dropped them in the low post in traffic with a strong finish. Surprised me Pondexter didn't take that. He's usually very good in the post up and uh, at getting the shot off. Uh, he, he threaded the needle there to get that one to Brockman. I didn't think that was going to be completed. Brockman got that shot off because he's wide. It certainly wasn't. He jumped over everybody, but they couldn't get close to his shot. How about Nick Young fading away from Adrian Oliver and knocking down another tough deuce? Young has 11 to lead the Trojans. He's on the floor with Gibson, Wilkinson, Stewart, and Pruitt. Paul, you told me before the game he's got a great fadeaway. He does. Yeah, Oliver he from the elbow. Brockman can't handle it out of bounds for USC. I like Brockman. I, any coach loves somebody that, that, that hustles and uh, he, he never stops. He go. He thinks every rebound is his. He thinks it's a pass to him. <laughs> <laughs> Howard Iverson would love to play with him. I'll throw you the ball. It's going to hit the rim. Well, first, the thing is, Iverson good. misses a lot more shots for him to go get than That's the Huskies right. are missing tonight. <laughs> He probably feels also he's got something to prove. Had eight points, only two rebounds last Saturday at Oregon. Oliver guarding Pruitt out on the wing. Dentman back in the game for Appleby. Brockman, Nelson, and Hawes for the University of Washington. Final 90 seconds in the first half. Nice crossover move by Young. He's got three in a row for the Trojans. And it is a 10-point game. I thought Nelson did everything he could there. And, you know, in fact, he's still got up a hand that could test the shot. But... Uh, Great shot by Young. Brockman steps inside, knocks it down. Brockman is halfway to the double-double. 11 points, also has five rebounds. The Huskies are looking really good, but SC's defense, this is not the team that's been playing great defense all year. I mean, that was, he caught that ball at the free throw line and took one dribble into the where the Pac-10 sign is and jumped, and, and, and Gibson kind of said, oh, uh, there he is. I mean, it's just that their intensity is not there defensively. Uh, Young starts the sequence, bats the ball out of Hawes' hands for Pruitt to the rack, and Hawes hammers him flying to the equipment at the other end, and Pruitt takes just a moment to get up as he collects his senses. You know, as if it's not hard enough to keep Rockman off the boards when the, when the guy you're playing with is Steve Hawes. He's receiving a lot of help, and yeah. uh, that, that opens the offensive boards up even more for Brockman. Or they'll like that last play. Uh, they were kind of fronting and, and having a man behind Hawes, and all of a sudden you throw it to Brockman, he's got the clear path to the basket. Pruitt shooting two on the foul, and they had a choice down there, Spencer Hawes or Phil Nelson, and they charged the foul to Nelson. That's respect. <laughs> That's why, you know, Kurt Rambis, if you remember with the old Great Laker team, <laughs> there'd be a foul, and the referee would point. He'd say, see Kareem, he goes, no, not him. And then he Worthy, no. Magic, no. Byron Scott. They'd point to Rambis, you know, like some kind of a, of a magnet. And Rambis would raise his hand. He might even be sitting on the bench. He'd get the foul. <laughs> now, th this is, by the way, it should be no surprise because USC leads the Pac-10 shooting the three ball at 40%. Washington not far behind at 36 and tonight we have seen a triple fest in the first half. Well Huskies are 9 for 13. What's what's that percentage? That's 69.2 off the top of my right head. Off the top of your head. <laughs> <laughs> that seems you, 4 for 7. Well, the moral is they should shoot more threes. Did, did you know that he was that smart on his feet, that quick on his feet mathematically when you worked with him in the NBA? He had all those things memorized. That was his free throw percentage. <laughs> That, by the way, was USC's <laughs> first free throw of the game. And you take a look at the numbers on the three. Well, let's talk for a moment about the foul shooting because Washington has given up a ton to the other guy. As a matter of fact, at the Galen Center, the Trojans outshot the Huskies by a wide margin. Pruitt misses the opportunity to creep within a point of his thousandth for the season. 48 points and a half with 26 seconds to go. They could break the 50 mark. SC, usually a, even a, a good team, you know, a hot team doesn't hit 50 till inside 10 minutes of the uh, second half against the Trojans. 
This has been an offensive show by the by Washington. The Trojans have held 11 teams under 60 as Nelson turns around, steps back, and Haas with the offensive rebound missed everything. Nelson had a chance. It's knocked out of bounds with a second and a half remaining. They should run that out of bounds play that they ran for Spencer Hawes, and they've got the three to tie the game right now. 1.4. Washington at home averages 84 points a game on the road, 69. Nelson steps back and fires and is just a little bit short as the Huskies against a team that allows an average 63 points a game. Leads the Pac-10, the other guys shoot 38%. Washington shoots 55%. The Huskies particularly have been raining threes in the Emerald City and lead by 11 at the break. USC battling for second in the Pac-10, but working out of a deficit at halftime in Seattle. USC has struggled just keeping Washington out of the kitchen, particularly from three-point range. Tim Floyd has tried a number of different personnel combinations, even got some riled up, he earned himself a technical foul in the first half, but really, if you break it down by the numbers, guys, here is what's going on. Looks like SC's gonna have to hold them to 14 in the second half to get their defensive average. <laughs> Washington again, worth noting, averages 84 points a game at home, although Haas and Brockman misconnect on the first possession of the second half. That is Washington's seventh turnover of the game. And USC turned it over six times the first half, but theirs, Bob, seemed to hurt the Trojans more. Yeah, they did. And, uh, you know, that pass right there, that was one of those uh, bad angle things where you're trying to feed the post from directly above it. And it's a high turnover situation. Brockman had him on his hip, but he just couldn't get the ball to him. Gibson to Wilkinson, who, again, is a guy who averages 11 minutes a game. He's a 36% field goal shooter, but the sophomore Wilkinson three of five tonight six points puts him fairly high up on the Trojans leaderboard count that basket for Quincy Pondexter and put him on the free throw line to boot yeah this guy I love Quincy Pondexter he's a great offensive rebounder he can make uh, flow passes he sees the play he can take it all the way in like he did there he's got the mid range take it in stop and shoot over you well rounded player well, he's got that look, uh, that Luol Dang kind, kind of NBA body. Uh, just looks like it, it's uh, quick and, and high jumping, long arms. And he's got quick feet defensively, too. Appleby has been bothering Lodrick Stewart all night, and Pruitt rims one out from beyond the arc, knocked out of bounds. Brockman couldn't control, so it remains with the Trojans, and USC has a fresh... 35 second clock free throw shooting on December 28th USC 29 of 38 Washington but 8 of 12 no shot Bruce Hicks adamant on the call that Spencer Hawes is with uh, whistled for his first of the game and that was unusual you throw a lob pass over <laughs> Hawes to, <laughs> to a 6-6 six, six guy no wonder there was no shot <laughs> Funny thing about it was it worked. He got uh, he got fouled on the floor. Uh, Brockman goes over Gibson's back on the entry pass, and he is called for his second personal. But again, remember in Los Angeles in December, Brockman was in foul trouble much of the night. Wound up with 11 rebounds for only four points. He had 11 here in the first half. Appleby now switched out on Young. Wilkinson loosely guarded by Brockman. Dentman picks up Pruitt. Nice move inside along the baseline. Can't knock it down and Haas with another rebound. He has a half dozen to go along with his five first half points. Pondexter says I can spin it too. Stewart does a nice job of picking him up on the switch. Running under the screen. No shot. Wilkinson pushing and you know this of, game I, I'm sorry. What, what, he, well, he's, he's, look at it, he's going what was that about well this game had a really nice pace I thought it was up and down very few fouls in the first half and now they've just called three that I, I think Bob and I are looking at each other and go did they really have to call that yeah that one especially I didn't think they had a call pause off the glass Rockman pause caught nothing 
but plexiglass with Brockman on the rebound earns himself a trip to the free throw line. Brockman with his seventh rebound, Gibson's second foul. And I expect that USC is going to play better defense this half, but they got to keep Brockman off the board or it's going to be the same amount of points. It's hard to box out for that kind of miss, though. That didn't even hit the rim, and so by the time Taj Gibson figured it was time to get his body on Brockman, the ball was already in his hands. Yeah, you're right. Washington, over the last couple of years, well, particularly since Lorenzo Romar arrived, plays at a frenetic pace at both ends of the floor. And sometimes if, if you're a young opponent, that can kind of mess you up a little bit, just getting used to that and the speed and the rhythm of that. And here's another one of those fouls. Yeah, this is uh, starting to be a trend. That's uh, three team fouls on each, each, each squad now with only two minutes gone in the half. But, uh, you know, Nick Young looks like he knows how to run hard off those uh, baseline picks when, a, when there's any physical contact. Some guys have a knack of drawing that foul. That's the second time he's gotten Pondexter on that move. Gibson throws the ball behind Stewart. Dentman says thank you. Three on one break to one to two to three. Dentman to Appleby to Brockman. Tim Floyd like just cannot be happy at all. Roderick Stewart and Nick Young barely made it to half court. And the Huskies were down there playing catch under the basket until they decided to shoot the layup. Yeah. Strong, strong move by Gibson to respond, but 16 points was Washington's largest of the night. They needed to bring Pete Carroll up here for that halftime talk, maybe. Little Gipper speech. Nice pass inside. Pondexter lost Young. Counts the basket. And Pondexter playing now with three fouls. Will shoot one on charity. Young with the foul. That's his third. That's not easy. Nick Young's pretty long, and uh, Pondexter posted him up, and uh, the help was late coming. And you know that was a very impressive play by the Huskies. He's a he's a great offensive player. You know, Paul, we talked earlier about hey, it's hard to turn it and flip the switch if you don't come out ready to play. Uh, the Washington kids look like they're hungry, and they're out here playing hard. It's it's going to be hard for USC to flip this around. Well, especially they're down 17 now, Bob. And as you know, SC being more of a controlled, not slow down team, but they like to control the tempo. Well, when you're down 17, you need to come back. It's not easy to do that if you're milking the shot clock. No. Can they do that with a guy in Wilkinson who, no disrespect, but he averages 11 minutes a game. Can they do that with him on the floor as he works pause pretty well and forces him into a tough shot? Off the hustle, the basketball stays well, with Well, one reason Wilkinson on the floor is even though, despite his, his shooting percentage, he's a pretty decent mid-range shooter, and uh, as, as opposed to Abdullah Enjai, who can't shoot outside at all. So I think Tim Floyd's playing because he needs the size against Brockman and Haas and uh, figures that if he doesn't have somebody who can shoot it, as at least a threat to shoot it, Haas will just stay inside and clog the, the, the basket. So that, that's, that's why he's out there and, and playing more minutes than usual. Wilkinson, a sophomore from Mission Viejo, played his high school ball at Capistrano Valley. And again, 11 minutes a game, 36% from the floor, but he has shown up in a moment. Enjai has not played at all, and Wilkinson now has himself another basket. He's four, six, eight points. You know, uh, that was a bad foul by Brockman. He's already got two. You don't want him to get his third, and he just takes an unnecessary foul at about 20 feet. And now he's got to sit on the bench. That could change the flow of this game. Dentman has it blocked by Gibson. Look at that. He kept that inbound. Wasn't that amazing? <laughs> that was great play. That was a Bill Russell block. First of all, a block of three. <laughs> and then, like you said, keep it in play. Gibson owns the freshman record at USC for freshman blocks, as does Haas at the University of Washington. Stewart puts it on the floor and scores, taking Appleby all the way to the rack. This is a very, very important time in the game for Washington. They cannot let them just make a big run here. One more basket, there's going to be a well, timeout. Like you said, with Brockman out, that, that was what hurt them so badly down in uh, Los Angeles when they played, is they couldn't keep Brockman on the floor. Trojans have scored six unanswered. Artem Wallace from Appleby. Hopping into the lane and missing the shot, but he'll go to the free throw line. Gibson fouled him. I didn't like that call either. I, I thought that uh, pretty good defense, but uh, get to shoot two free throws because they're calling it close in the second half. Roderick Stewart, four of eight from the floor, nine points. Six of 12 is his best in homecomings to Seattle. He's helped SC get back within 11. 
Seattle native Lodrick Stewart out of Rainier Beach High School had a great career as a prep at Rainier Beach High School in the city. Twice a class 3A champion a couple of years ago. His final year 2003 at the Tacoma Dome down I-5. He was the tournament MVP as Lodrick, his twin brother Roderick, who started at SC and transferred to Kansas, uh, put the exclamation point on one back-to-back -back championships for Mike Bethay and Rainier Beach. That's something because high school basketball in, in the state of Washington is just it's everybody knows it's really outstanding. Last year Spencer Hawes who is wearing number 10 white Hawes you see him just in the corner of your shot right there Hawes was at Seattle prep a state champion. Artem Wallace from Toledo. He and Lorenzo Romar actually spent several minutes after shoot around today and Wallace is 0 for 3 he doesn't he shoots one out of three by percentage. Well, but Bob he, you break this shot down and say. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what Romar was saying fellas get the ball over your head. He's shot putting from his chin. Well he, he, he makes his body into an S too as he shoots it's like a, a big thick ball of spaghetti shooting a free throw. <laughs> and I've never seen a bowl of spaghetti make a free throw. <laughs> Two shows tonight, Link. Don't forget to tip your waiter. Gibson on the turnaround, spins and scores <laughs> over Hawes. It's Paul yeah, Westfall cool. laughing. Bob Weiss also in the house. I'm Brian Davis in Bank of America Arena in Seattle, where now USC is on the verge of cutting Washington's lead at 1.16 here early in the second half. Putting it single digits. And Stewart, uh, unlucky. The, the referee, Michael Eggers, is saving the beauty play. by the referee. And at the other end, Appleby knocks down the three. Do you get oh, Michael Eggers? Do you give him an assist on that? You should. And you know what? When it, when that three went in, he went darn it, you know, because he knew he was responsible for that. Well, Nick Young gets it right back though for Southern California. Young, eight of ten, 18 points. All of a sudden, he is over his team leading average of 17. And seven for nine in the second half for USC. Well, hey, did hey, listen? He did this in the conference opener against Washington. Had two at the half and scored 23. In the second half, and then in the two overtime periods they play, and the These Trojans guys. won that game. Wallace just got caught on a moving pick there. Now, here's the question, fellas: Would you rather be lucky or good? And tonight, Appleby, I think, has been both. If, if you get the win being lucky, take it. But that's the Huskies are not being lucky tonight. That that one play, but the Huskies are thoroughly thrashing, really. Appleby well, is uh, five of seven beyond the arc, fellas. Sixteen points. Got a little bit of a rebound edge. Turnovers are even. But uh, they got they got a Washington has to play some defense now because the shooting has been fantastic. <laughs> There's 80 percent for this half. I think that basket down there might be a little bigger than the you other. No that you could be right. Gibson does make it a single digit game. Gibson now with four or five eight points to go along with a game high eight rebounds. Pause in the post over Wilkinson and Adrian Oliver went over Gibson's back as he fought for the rebound and that is another team foul six now against Washington. Well, if they keep calling them like this, and I'm not saying that wasn't a foul, but there's going to be a lot of free throws. Just the pace of this game to slow down considerably. Gibson working over one of the two seniors on this team, Hans Gasser. Well, Gibson has quickness. He has, he has quickness over anybody that the Huskies can match up uh, size-wise with him. And uh, if he's aggressive, he should be able to get some something at the basket pretty often. Wilkinson with a career high. Eight points. Out to Pruitt for three. Missing. Out of bounds. Off of Gibson. Now, here comes Vern Harris to say, I didn't see it that way. Tim Floyd is looking right behind him. Says he, I didn't see it that way either. You see, well, I think Vern Harris is saying it, it, it could have been a foul. I think he's saying that. And, uh, they didn't want to call the foul. Gibson technically hit it, but I think that uh, you see that call quite often where somebody muscles muscles into the play and, and rather than give a foul, they just call, give the ball to SC. In fact, Bob, you and I were at Oregon State a couple of weeks ago and saw Vern Harris make exactly that same judgment. Well, <laughs> the official will also use it as a bailout. Yeah. You know, you go over, I didn't touch him. Or uh, I didn't hit it. Well, I didn't want to call foul on you. 
Michael I didn't Lakers. foul him either. Michael Lakers <laughs> caused that foul on Hans Gasser. That's why officials didn't like you. You're <laughs> <laughs> I wondered why I was. <laughs> Come to think of it, I don't think they like anybody. Uh, no. wow. Gibson now on the one and one. He is a 62% free throw shooter. This is a little early to be in the bonus, isn't it? Put you into dangerous territory, especially considering that you got two guys, two starters that are sitting with three fouls right now and Pondexter and Brockman Gasser misses USC's basketball Wilkinson Pruitt Lewis Gibson and Stewart on the floor for the Trojans for the Huskies Appleby Gasser Hawes Nelson and Oliver and Romar is not going to take any chances he's going to uh, put Brockman back in the game try to get this thing stabilized he doesn't want to lose it here at the 12 minute mark so he'll take a little bit of a risk. The three ball has not been falling for USC. They're five of 11. But Wilkinson overplays it. A little soft touch doesn't get there from Appleby to Haas. That was a nice defensive play. Haas has to be careful, too, because he fouls a lot when he gets that kind of position. His elbows are so high, he'll hit a guy in the face a lot. Gibson's going to go back to the free throw line. Again, this is a young man, a freshman out of Brooklyn. Leads the Pac-10, shooting 58%, but is somewhere in the netherworld at 62 percent on charity the Huskies have turned the table so we talked about how it went in Los Angeles on December the 28th their last three games the other guy has shot 106 free throws 80 for 106 Washington as Brockman checks back in Washington the last three games is 30 of 36. <laughs> Well, that's a that's three for one. That's as significant as, as any stat could possibly be. I mean, that, that's that's huge, and, and it's such a trickle down when the other team's shooting more free throws. You know, it means they're getting easy baskets, getting your guys in foul trouble. It's it's a monstrously important statistic, and also making them, which Todd Gibson is not doing now, is monstrously important. Well, you saw USC taking an eight-point advantage, essentially an eight-point swing in scoring since Brockman left, and now he's back. So Wallace is on the floor along with the freshman Nelson. USC is one out of five on charity. Part of that is because Gibson has taken three of them and missed all three. Romar needs to have a conversation with his guys. Taj Gibson showing some real nice moves in the run of play. It is an eight point game. Washington's favorite. Brian Davis, Bob Weiss, Paul Westfall at the Bank of America Arena in Seattle, where Washington has led all night long. The Huskies shooting, both teams shooting the ball very well, but the atypical piece is that USC usually allows the other guy only 38% from the floor. That, that's sixth in the country, Bob Weiss. Yeah, they are very good, and especially without a big shot blocker to be able to have the, the defensive percentage. And, uh, this is a dangerous time for Washington because the only creator they have in there is Dentman. Everybody else is kind of a role player. Blockman, Brockman can post up a little bit, but they got nobody in there that can really create a shot. Oliver can do it a little bit, but uh, he has not seemed to have the confidence to do it consistently. Justin Dentman with 11 first half points hasn't scored in the second. He was one of the guys who got the Huskies off to a hot start, shooting the ball well early, and Brockman. With a little hook move, rattles it down. Set play for him out of the timeout, and uh, they, they, I guess they know that he's their MVP. Yeah. <laughs> 17 points now on seven of nine shooting. Seven rebounds. Arnold Wallace set his feet and draws the offensive foul call on Dwight Lewis. Wallace started seven games this season. Let's take a look at Brockman's handiwork. And it wasn't easy, but it got it done. And at the other end, look at Wallace just get in. He just did set his feet in time, and Lewis assessed. Lewis was really surprised to see him. His eyes were getting big. He was trying to think what kind of dunk he was. He was wondering if he was going to slap a sticker up on the board. You know, Paul, I think Washington, to me, they they, they rotate from that weak side better than, uh, I think, any team I've seen. They, you know, defensive percentages was good to some people, but that weak side rotation, 
It, they really have that down. Okay, coaching clinic time as we look at the disparity in free throw shooting. Again, Lorenzo Romar before the game at shoot around this afternoon said, get the ball higher before you release it, fellas. Put your coaching hats on and, and let's assess this one. Well, first of all, if you have to coach a guy in free throws at this stage of the career of, of the season, it's pretty desperate time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's hard for them to remember any of your finer tips, but you have to do it. We, yeah. Uh, see, Bro uh, Brockman has struggled occasionally with uh, the free throw too, and uh, he starts down on a very low crouch and comes out of it, but. Uh, uh, Wallace does that a little bit starts very low and all of a sudden you're shooting at a moving target as you're rising up. Abdulli Enjai is on the floor for the first time for USC. Pruitt misses the long ball. Pondexter has another rebound. He has three. Quincy Pondexter the son of Roscoe played for Lute Olsen at Long Beach State. His uncle Cliff played in the NBA after playing also for Olsen at Long Beach State. Cliff, Cliff and Roscoe were, were built. I mean, they were really strong. They, this kid, they must have got all his food because he hasn't uh, <laughs> filled out yet. Well, and that's the upside, and that's one of the reasons the coaching staff liked him. Pulled a shoot now. Dentman really bothered. Heaves one up, missed everything, and they let it go, and that goes as a shot clock violation. Another turnover, the 10th of the night for Washington. They're going to have to keep those turnovers down. They want to stay in this ball game because you know USC is going to play better. Here's Hackett. Brockman's guarding Abdullah Njai, which uh, is unlikely to pick up a foul guarding him, but uh, he just switched off on Nick Young or tried to help on Nick Young. If they call that on Brockman, that's four. It is on Brockman. Actually, it is on Pondexter, but that's four on him. So either way, you got a guy now, one of your starters with four. He had multiple choice, it's I think. Bad news that it's on Pondexter. Would have been worse if it was on Brockman. I think you're right. So he's got to sit and quickly. Spencer Haas has got to re-enter the game. And Nick Young is at 20 points with that basket for the tenth time this season. Well, I'm surprised it's not 20 times this season. <laughs> I mean, he, he scores so easily, and, and he, he really is an unselfish player where he'll go periods of time where he doesn't look to score but when he decides to turn it on uh, I really haven't seen anybody that could stop him. Well you know a big key is it looks so easy when he's doing it you know there's, there's no panic there's no rush yeah, he just is in control the whole time. Midpoint of the second half USC has cut a 17 point Huskies lead to eight make it 10 as Nelson just slithers nice amongst the trees. He's, that just hung there. He surprised Young and he surprised me. I didn't know he had that one either. <laughs> but I don't think he surprised That's himself. Sweet. No, he did not surprise himself. He's very athletic, Paul. He was a high jumper in uh, high school. And at the other end, he gets a little bit too high and a little bit too close to Nick Young. And picks up this foul. Nelson, two of four tonight, seven points. He averages five a game in an average of 16 minutes. UFC is yeah, that was a beautiful play. And I was watching his pivot foot. He did not move it at yeah. all. He Good kept move. that left foot uh, down and jabbed with his uh -huh. right twice, and then arched it over the shot blocker. It was it was impressive. UFC is now shooting on non shooting fouls two for every common foul Washington with its 10 doesn't matter how many foul. they shoot if they keep missing them all another one two out of seven and that's from young now who is a 75 percent free throw shooter the junior out of Cleveland High School in L.A. you know missing free throws is contagious I remember one time uh, we went through a stretch back when George Carl was coaching the Sonics. We had tremendous free throw shooters. That left shrimp was over 80. Hersey Hawkins, Sam Perkins, and we we at one point missed like eight technicals in a row. <laughs> How do you explain that? It's yeah. just, just over like yeah. five or six games. Uh, nobody could make it. Well, the Trojans have struggled with free throws already this year. They had UCLA dead to rights at Galen Center and missed three one and ones in the last uh, couple minutes of play and and uh, let that game get away. It was pretty much directly attributable to not being able to make the free throws when they have to. Trojans again extending that defense and it is getting late. Dentman is in the trees and Hawes has got a 
fire one up only his third three-point attempt and Oliver touches the ball over and back another turnover Washington in double digits and the Trojans have a chance that's, to a, get that's an incorrect closer. call yeah there was that not an over and back because there was no possession right yeah the, the shot was missed and it was tapped out a long rebound it's it's that's not an over and back it's it's up for grabs then that looked like SC's defense on that play that, that looked very much that's not over and back no but that that was the kind of intensity that they've shown most of the time. It's really the first time tonight I've seen that where they all bent their knees and uh, were were tuned in. Everything but everything but tapping the floor. Yeah. Hackett uncorks a long three straight down the barrel in Dentman. I see Vern Harris says it belongs to Washington, but then Michael Eggers did have a better angle and says Dentman. Touched it Tim last Floyd helped him a little bit on that call. Yeah, he, too, he's I been think. helping a lot tonight. <laughs> At one point, I thought he was going. He came out on the floor. I think he came to midcourt. I thought he was going to get on a striped shirt and go. And another foul is called. And so Floyd's guys get a chance to cut into this lead with the clock stopped. As long as again they make those free throws. You know, uh, <laughs> free throws is something. As a coach, you no just you, you hate to. You know, some coaches don't shoot any free throws during practice they don't want their players thinking about it and I tried to come up with an analogy for it and uh, you know sometimes it's like putting your four year old to bed and the last thing you say is now there is no boogeyman and he's not under your bed so go to sleep okay <laughs> you just don't want your players thinking about it you know so that's the best analogy I can come up pretty good I tell you what the boogeyman is under Brockman's bed right now with four fouls one more he's done and we still have eight minutes to play and at this point we're going to be seeing a lot of free throw shooting given the fact that UFC is already in the super bonus and Washington's already in the one and one seven point game eight minutes to go this is uh, wide open now they brought Appleby back when Brockman came out. They also replaced Brockman with Artem Wallace. Haas and Dentman and Nelson with the ball. And again, the Trojans extending that defense. Three possessions in this half. They have forced Washington to chuck one up as the shot clock wound down. Time taken, though, as Tim Floyd wanted one, wanted to, to talk yeah. something over. Well, well Ro Romar just yeah. didn't want to see them taking a bad shot at the end of the clock it again so he called the timeout. So a seven point lead had been 17. Hang on. Going to be interesting in Seattle. Washington under 50 percent shooting in the half. SC meantime 10 of 18 and Nick Young is doing against the Huskies what he did on December 28th at the Galen Center. Young has 11 points in the half, 24 in the basketball game. But his scoring here in this half has been a lot more timely as again the Trojans have cut that lead from 17 to 5. Well, the thing that impresses me, he's got 24 points on 12 shots. I mean, he has <laughs> just been, he's made 10 out of 12. Wallace makes another. Free throw. And you hear the crowd get into oh, it. They man, know they what the situation it. is. He's three out of seven, and for him, that's a victory. Born in St. Petersburg, Russia, and Enjai is there just a, an eyelash quicker than Spencer Hawes. And you see, in a, Brockman's foul trouble is figured in this, and Pondexter as well. Well, it's time for Lodrick Stewart. He uh, his eyes light up when he when he sees his own, and I uh, look for him to run the baseline and get something from the corner here pretty soon. Uh, the other thing too is that right now Dentman in that zone. Dentman is on Stewart, although Nelson with his length can give him a problem. But Ryan Appleby did a nice job in the first half off the lob, just a little bit soft. Looked like Cool was late cutting along the baseline. Well, it was there. a really weak pass. You can't throw a jump hook pass, you know, off the dribble. Uh, and they'd already shown the lob. I think that you have to give Washington a little more credit in that. They're just not going to get lobbed every time they play a zone. So an elbow thrown on the near side of the floor. Njai is called for his third personal, and that is the 10th team foul. And okay, it's this Artem may be Wallace. Their this, <laughs> you know that that's exactly right, and Wallace. But but Wallace is making him pay right now. He's four out of nine. And he's bumping that lead back up. Both teams now in the two shot bonus. 
And uh, you know his final release is not bad. He's got a real great rotation on the ball. Doesn't look that bad. He shouldn't be as bad as uh, his shooting percentage is. Most of us that that boogeyman. You know he's thinking about it too much. Yeah. But see right now that's the guy that's under Brockman's bench, so he, he can't get out on the floor. And look at that. Little defensive tenacity from Nelson and the Huskies, and the ball is back to Washington. The zone has bothered the Trojans. Really has. I'm not sure that's what they're going to talk about at this 22nd, uh, 32nd timeout. Tim Floyd calls for 30. Five and a half minutes remaining, and Washington, uh, USC doesn't turn it over very often. The 10th one, though, for Washington, timely. And the ball was thrown. That's a tough yeah, pass to throw uh, to Gibson. Well, it, it's, it, he's very uncomfortable away from the basket. That's a lot to ask him. Uh, a guy who's not really a threat to score to be, be making feeding passes from up there because they're not going to pressure him. They're just, there's no passing angles. No. Time to with a guy, yeah, going up and down trying to get it there. Time for the Pac-10 tournament, fellas. Which teams will keep alive the dream for a little March Madness? Find out Wednesday's the first round games get underway at 6.30 p.m. Pacific. And Thursday, the quarterfinals at noon. Catch the semis starting Friday at 6 p.m. right here on FSN, your home for the Pac-10 tournament. What a great season in the conference. There is not, even at Oregon State at 2-7 and seven in the league, Arizona State, rather, uh, Arizona State at 1-15 and 15 and Oregon at 3-14, and 14, no non-starters in this league. And both these teams have found out the Trojans at Arizona State and the Huskies last week in Corvallis. Well, I, I uh, did that Arizona State game for SC, and you know it wasn't even a bad loss. Arizona State played well and beat them. That's all. And SC didn't play terrible. They didn't overlook them. They just, you know, Arizona State has been improving all year, and their record uh, has just suffered from the early setbacks. Gibson puts it on the floor. Haas forces him out. It looked like he traveled, but they get it back in three yeah. seconds. Now the, there's the travel call, but also three yeah. seconds was coming to mind right yeah. there, too, guys. You know, it reminds me one time I saw Wilt Chamberlain catch the ball about two feet inside the free throw line, and there was somebody standing in between him, and he didn't have that shot. He just stood there and held it, looked at it. He didn't want to back away, but he, he didn't have a jump shot. He got three seconds. <laughs> Taj Gibson should have shot that ball. What was he thinking? <laughs> well, here, here we're seeing it. Look, watch the full, watch, watch his footwork. Four steps. Yep. Good call. <laughs> By the way, tomorrow is the anniversary of Chamberlain's hundred point game. Bob, Don't. are you there? Uh, I was in the league a long time before that. <laughs> but I mean, you played with Will. Did you, were no, you on the team at that time? No, I was not with him. And uh, that game was played on, on a short court. It was uh, up in Hershey at a high school gym. So it wasn't a 94 foot court. Appleby beats the shot clock but misses. And on the run out, boy, Pruitt ahead of everybody for the layup. And uh, the other thing that happened in that game was Wilt made, you know, horrendous free throw shooter for his career. He was something like 30 out of 32. Is that, that something? Yeah. Just uh, everything was lined up right that night. Yep. USC has turned it up defensively, has bothered Washington, but Wilkinson, as Haas tries to post him up, Wilkinson, who is playing with a career high eight points, commits his third personal foul. Now, USC turns the ball over on consecutive possessions. Pruitt makes good here. Washington by six under four in regulation. With Paul Westfall, Bob Weiss, Brian Davis at Bank of America Arena in Seattle. USC has bucked it up defensively and has held Washington to 41% field goal shooting while shooting 63% its own self. Well, time starting to be a factor, though, now, Brian, with uh, the Huskies' two shots here, uh, assuming that Haas makes both. That's eight points, eight-point lead with uh, less than four minutes. That's not, it's not time to panic, but SC has to string together some stops, and uh, they can't take all day about scoring. I mean, it, you, you don't want to rush bad shots, but uh, they're going to take a shot when they get it. I would think they're going to try to get it to Nick Young and let him create something a little earlier in the clock than is their habit. 
And I think Washington, if, if they're going to look at this, they, they need somebody to come through and score some points. You, you, you're going to have to see a, a three by Appleby or they get it inside to Hawes, let him do something. And, and watch Brockman, too. He can turn the game around with those uh, or, or end this game with a couple offensive putbacks. And it is, for SC, it is Lodrick Stewart time with, with this zone. He's got to find a way to get open. And he's kind of standing out there. He's pretty easy to guard right now. Those were Haas's first points of the half. Now Appleby won't get close to Stewart like he did when they were in man. And Oliver does a nice job. And Dentman tips the ball away as Oliver forces Stewart to put the ball on the floor. That was great defense. Lodrick just did not protect that ball. When you dribble in there, you got to figure they're going to slap at it. He just had the ball right where two or three guys could get a piece of it. And, and both those guys have good hands, Dentman and Oliver. Brockman, Pruitt fights through the pick, but again into single digits on the shot clock. Dentman finds Hawes working on Wilkinson, spins and knocks down a big basket with two seconds on the 35 clock. Lorenzo Romar could not ask for anything more out of that uh, possession. <laughs> Milk it all the way down and get a high percentage shot for his big freshman. Hawes, three of ten from the floor tonight. He scored four quickly here now for Washington. Young rattles down. A long deuce. Nick Young with 24 points. Gibson with 10. Pruitt with 13. Eight point lead, 220 to go. It's, uh, it's pretty non negotiable now. They, uh, the Trojans have to get stops and takeaways. I can't get over how young is it under such control. He's made a lot of tough shots tonight with a hand right in his face, and he still shot a, a tremendous percentage. 11 for 13. Now, what he has done at and Haas is no shot, first of all, but Wilkinson reached in and is called for the foul. And uh, late here, it is becoming the Spencer Haas show. And Wilkinson, a little bit bemused by a, a couple of foul calls. Well, at the other end, let's study Nick Young for a moment. Well, he just, like Bob says, he's just under control. He, he knows nobody's going to block his shot. He, he just tunes out everything around him and concentrates on the rim and uh, makes it look easy, even though it, it's not. Is that your Pac-10 player of the year? A lot of people like Aaron Brooks at Oregon. Well, I think somebody from UCLA, probably Aaron Aflalo, will get it, in, especially if they hold on and, and, and win the conference. And, and probably rightly so. But I wouldn't be surprised if Nick Young wasn't uh, the best pro prospect, at least of the, of, of the seniors. I think some of these young bigs are going to be outstanding as well. But uh, he, he's got a bright future. One of the things that I think is worth noticing here as we head down the home stretch and Washington back up by 10 is where these teams are and where teams are generally compared to where folks thought they'd be before the season every year before they get going. They pull the Pac-10 media. UCLA holds to form, but Arizona and Washington certainly don't. I mean, here's how they lined up and Washington all the way at the bottom of that pile. So that's what we thought would happen here is what actually has happened. And there, there have been a couple surprises. I mean, big surprises, particularly Washington State and USC is a lot farther up the ladder than people thought they'd be and Washington a lot farther down. Well, that's why they play the game, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do we know? You know, you know something about those two teams that moved up, though? Their top three players, a lot of them are, are juniors, you know, at least sophomores. They're not relying a whole bunch on freshmen. Pruitt jacked up the three. He's not having a great shooting night. Five out of 13, two of eight now from three, but now it's Wilkinson's turn. Wilkinson's turn to go back to the free throw line. It looks like the Huskies are right about on their home average. We can say it is 84, and they got 78 right now. They figure to score six more just from the free throws that SC is going to have to uh, give them as they extend their defense and uh, start gambling because it's that time of the game. And uh, Brockman is probably the guy they want to put on the line if it comes down to that. Wilkinson splits the difference the Trojans six out of 12 50 percent tonight Washington 18 to 25 Pruitt bumping Dentman 
Trapping pressure, Brockman to Oliver inside the hog. Handy from a baby. That would seem to be the exclamation point unless the Trojans can knock down a couple of threes. Washington on a 12 to 5 run. Lewis rebounded by Brockman. And he's getting a lot of room. Well, Washington basically played 39 minutes, almost 40, you know, now 40 minutes of basketball as soon as the game's over, where they had their intensity the whole time. I don't think SC really was intense except for about 12 minutes in the second half. And uh, you can't come in here against a team like Washington and, and take the game unless you're at least as intense as, as the Huskies are. No, this is a very competitive team, especially in this building. Spencer Haas has scored eight straight points. Was shut out here in the second half until he got to work the last couple of minutes. He's got eight straight now for the Huskies, who will go to 17 and 12 on the season, 7 and 10 in the Pac-10. The Trojans to 21 and 9, 11 and 6 in the conference. And UCLA had a significant lead in the second half at Pullman, leading Washington State. Trojans came here with a chance, a game behind the Cougars to catch up for second in the conference standings. Now outside of UCLA, oh. and, and they're obviously the, the cream of, of this conference, would it be a big upset any time Washington would win a game in the Pac-10 tournament? I, I don't think so. No, no. This is, this is going to be some tournament. I don't know if it's ever been like this. You know, you wonder back. I just wonder... What would have happened to Washington's year if they'd have won that overtime game? Yeah. Well, Everything could have been different. Yeah. You're right. Ryan Appleby we just got a shot of him. This is his fourth 20-point game of the season. He was on fire from three in the first half. He's got 21 now. He's not including five of seven beyond the arc, four of five on charity pending this second day. 14 now, 15-point lead. For the Huskies. I think Tim Floyd thinks Ryan Appleby's an All-American. <laughs> he is tonight. <laughs> Last in L.A., same thing. Young from the corner, rebounded by Oliver. Washington has made 11 consecutive free throws. We just saw how to play Young. Don't guard him. <laughs> every, every, Rope shot, every shot where you're right in his face, he drilled. He's wide open. He missed it. You take a look at USC. I used to try that defense a lot. <laughs> Fellas, <laughs> <laughs> you take a look at USC season, and they, they've lost a couple of games to UCLA by one and by five points. This is their most lopsided loss. They lost it by 10 at Arizona State. This is their most lopsided loss. It, it is. You know, they, in two games at UCLA, a total of 80 minutes, they only trailed for eight minutes. Uh, they, they, SC is is not used to getting a thump like this, and I think they have to look in the mirror and blame themselves because their defense is, has been what has uh, got them to a knocking on the door for second place in this conference, and tonight it just wasn't here. Detman. Well, in a big game because Washington State is behind UCLA right now. Well, SC still, uh, if my math is right, they have a chance to tie Washington State for second if they if, if Washington State loses tonight and, and the Trojans obviously are going to lose, but they're only one game back. So if they can if they can win, that's a huge if. Um, but in no, Pullman. Don't go there because when you start getting into tiebreakers, you need no, a I don't know what the tiebreakers are. Well, that's what I'm just, saying. Yeah. Just don't even go there. I'm going to get a headache just thinking about it. Well, you know, you have to talk about that stuff now <laughs> because you have well, to. it used to be first place was everything. Right. That's right. And now, well, well you know, the seeding for the tournament and for the, um, you know, for the conference tournament, the NCAA tournament, all, all that, all that jockeying for position does have an effect on you know how far you can go in the NCAA tournament. Tim Floyd warned his guys the Trojans uh, are in danger of suffering their most lopsided loss of the season. Floyd warned his guys these guys can fill it up in this building. Well one of the, the Trojans are like most college kids and most people I guess you know if they start thinking they're good they're <laughs> they're not as good and, and you know they just had a two big wins at, at, with Stanford and Cal down in California and uh, I think they thought that they could just handle this game, and they were wrong. 
Well, you know what? Same thing happened to Washington last week. They went down to Oregon State. It looks like the same type of situation. Put it in the books as Washington breaks a four game losing streak and gets back to five games over 500. A lot of people think they'd have to run the table in the Pac-10 tournament starting next Wednesday to have a chance at making it to the NCAAs, but they keep the dream alive tonight by handing the Trojans a 15 point defeat. Saturday, we will be with you from Friel Court in Poland, Washington, as they wind up the regular season, the Trojans and the Cougars of Washington State now. For Bob Weiss, Paul Westfall. Our crew in the truck and on the floor, I'm Brian Davis bidding you good night from the Bank of America Arena in Seattle.